How we doing? This is Fox back again. Going to start a little mini series now covering um, VPS Avenger or Vengeance Producer Suite Avenger. Yeah, I'm going to try and show you how everything works to the best of my ability. I won't be going into the drum sequencer. It's not something that I use, and if I'm honest, I haven't got a clue how it works. Uh, the main sound is on the synthesis part of it. It's took me a while, but I've got my head around it now. So yeah, I'm going to be loads of short little videos, maybe five, ten minute videos, taking this part piece by piece, showing you how to use it. So let's get cracking. To start with, I'm just going to be talking about these knobs around the outside of the main waveform that you choose. Quickly talk about how you choose your waveform. Just click on the bar at the top. You can choose between basics, all different shapes. Wavetables will go over in great detail. Also the way you can ma manipulate samples and special samples. But for now, we're just going to keep it on a saw wave. We'll initialize the patch. One thing I always do once the patch is initialized is uncheck this, this button here, which is to the reverb send and the delay send. Pull down the key tracking, which is this, on the filter cutoff. Now you literally just have a basic saw wave being controlled by an amp envelope. So, yeah, the basic controls. You've got the level or the gain. If you right click, you can control the pan. See that little blue knob swinging left or right? Anytime you see like an extra little horseshoe inside a knob, if you right click, it gives you an extra, an extra source of well it's got an extra function rather than just a level so gain right click it's your pan you then got transpose goes all the way up plus four octaves all the way down to minus four octaves very very slow or anything in between if ever you want to reset a control back to zero if you control click it then got fine tune, plus or minus a semitone. If we right click this, it changes the random pitch alternating. Like a round robin between that little section that you've chose, it will start the notes at a random point between the starting point and the end of that blue line. Looks like it only bounces between two. Let's try the full range. Yeah, it's just on or off. Um, so it will pick a random value between that. Yeah, it is it is random, but I say it's between a, a semitone, so it's quite hard to hear. This is your noise oscillator or noise generator. Right click controls the colour, so you can make it less or duller or less brighter if you drag it down. You've got everything from brown to pink to bright white. This one at the bottom is the noise rate. You can change the bit rate of the noise. It doesn't have its own independent volume control. It's noise source generated underneath the oscillator that you've got running. So you have to have some gain on the saw wave or whatever oscillator you've got there to hear the noise. Handy when you're making super saw sort of sounds. The, the FM knobs we'll cover in a minute. This X side is like um, a way you can morph the waveform. Turn the noise off. It's just a way of making it a less, more pure saw wave and giving it a different shape. If we load in a square wave, they all have different controls. It turns into a pulse width modulation then. If we go back to a sawtooth, you can change between X side and X side mid. Slightly different sort of morphing options that you have inside Serum. This one, format one is like bend, bend and negative when we get down to that. So yeah, this foreman. It's like a pulse width, but a very, very squashed, sort of thinner version of it. You then can change the foreman cut, which is a more severe. If you combine the two together, you can get some really cool sounds. You can really change the... Uh, initial waveforms up quite a lot. Um, this next one down you can change it to uh, bitrate. 
sorry, it's this one. We'll, we'll be able to turn it right into a square wave. You can change it to rate, bit crusher or rate reducer, or you can change it to both, a bit crusher and a rate reducer at the same time. This wave sync audio is um, a built-in sync knob. It has a built-in envelope as well, so you can whip this in. If we pull this down to zero, right-click is your envelope. If you push it round, get those screaming classic sync sounds. I haven't found out where this envelope is. As far as I'm aware, you can't. You, can't, you don't have control over this envelope, so you can't change the length of the decay. Um, or the steepness of the decay. The way you control the length of the decay is by your blue knob. Further round, the further it's going to push it up to the sink amount, and the longer it's going to take to come back. This at the bottom here is the envelope amount. This is the speed, actually. Yeah, so that's your envelope length. This is your envelope amount, the blue line. Let's add a bit of unison into this, so it's going to sound pucker. Sick, man. <laughs> Love a bit of sync. So, yeah, you've got control with the right click over how far the envelope is going to control. Sorry, how far the uh, sync is going to be pushed together or squeezed together. And then this little orange slider at the bottom is how long it's going to take to do that. <laughs> Now, I know control click resets the uh, knobs to where they were, but there's no way of resetting the modulation, so you have to sort of do it manually. So now we have amplitude modulation. Uh, this is sort of like ring modulation. You can choose which waveform you want to do it by if we do it by another saw wave. Summit square wavy. When you're using it, when you're doing this sort of AM or amplitude modulation on a basic waveform, it's just going to sort of rough things up a bit and make it less sound a little less like the original waveform. Not something I use if I'm honest. FM is more my thing. So rate. No idea what that does. Maybe it's if we have. doing nothing oh it's to do with the fm shit sorry let's turn this back again so yeah you've got your fm modulation so it's using another waveform to modulate the frequency or the pitch of this oscillator so we're using a sine wave you can see the sine wave coming into play the rate it steps it up in octaves or the harmonic intervals you can see more saw waves coming more sine waves coming into play the higher up the harmonic scale we go enables you to make some really gritty classic FM sounds with little or hardly any th thought about it. So you can go in semis. So that goes up in semitones. You're changing the pitch of the modulating oscillator by semitones rather than harmonic intervals. Go by octaves. Uh, minors. That's in the minor scale, the major scale, fifths and sevenths. You get the uh, gist. Harmonic is obviously always going to sound better. Let's introduce some detune again. So 
So yeah, that was very quick. Yeah, we might as well cover the detune section while we've been playing around with it a bit. So yes, um, the number of voices you can choose at the top here. We're going to go seven. Number of octaves that these voices are going to uh, occupy. So at the minute, if we bring in some detune, and this is the mix, you're going to see these colours sort of light up a bit. We introduce two octaves. Three. It spreads the new voices apart across these different octaves, helping up fill up more of the spectrum. Again, you're only going to want to be doing that if you're making huge pads and stuff like that. General, classic detune, um, just spreads them across one octave. You then have the choice of panning them or pushing these new voices across the stereo spectrum. back in while we're just messing around yeah cool the voicing section um, this is a bit more involved I will brush on this quickly you can choose um, to add extra intervals you can actually pick the what you want them so we can go a fifth a seventh a full octave up enables you to play chords with one finger. If you would like me to go in more depth about this, I can. You've got the tune in the pan and the volume of each individual sort of extra voice that you add in if you like. We then have a dedicated sub oscillator with a volume control. We'll turn these off. These sub oscillator is per voice or per oscillator. So sine wave, triangle, square, another saw wave. You can choose between an octave above, an octave below, or just zero octave. You can choose an endless sub. If you turn this on, um, it pitches everything a sort of an octave below your starting point, and no matter where you play it on the keyboard, it only covers one octave. Just repeats it across the uh, whole key bed. So if you only want to play across one octave at a low level, turn the endless sub on. So that's voicing done very, very quickly. Talk about, uh, let's quickly initialize this. I may be going a bit fast, but there's so much to cover in this thing. Talk about the um, built-in vibrato, and that's basically all the main controls covered. So you've got a vibrato amount and a vibrato rate. Vibrato, it's modulating the pitch. You can choose between independent, so you get a new one start for every new voice. They're all going to cross over each other and sound a bit crazy. Or if you have it global, it's one vibrato LFO. Anytime you bring in a new voice, it's going to latch onto it, modulate at the same sort of speed and rate. Um, you then have a choice to fade the vibrato in, so if we have a fast rate, a lot of amount. If we fade it in, it's going to be a delayed amount of time before the vibrato comes in. You can then change the curve of this so you can have quite a, a rampy one. Or a long lead in and then an abrupt change in pitch at the end. Yeah, very cool. Lots of controls. The voicing section, I say, or the corder if you like. Um, is very very useful. There are presets in here, so we could choose a major big two. Got that vibrato in there as well. Two times unison. Rich detuner. Yep, 
Yep, anyway, that is it. That is the basic oscillator controls that you have no matter what you're using, whether you're using these shapes, whether you're using wavetables, all of the controls are exactly the same. Um, yep, some of them you will use more than others. The FM I love inside this. It's very, very easy to change the rate and uh, manipulate sounds to give it a little bit more grip without going into the distortion that you've got inside the effects section. Um, yep, these formant things and these little bends sort of, ways that you can modulate the sounds as well especially if you load in a wavetable if we load in a synthesis just quickly going to show you something let's load in another wavetable hard dubstep growl You can see what you can do with these um, formants and <laughs> very cool. Okay, stay tuned on the next one. Next one, we'll be going over amplitude envelope. And filter, that should just about do it. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching.